I showed you how you could create a grid container. You set the display property to grid, and voila, all the direct children of the grid container become grid items. Grid items are placed in rows by default, and they span the full width of the grid container. Let's look a little deeper into the grid template columns and grid template rows. When we use grid template columns or grid template rows, we are explicitly setting a grid by creating columns and rows using these properties. But because grid is so awesome, we don't have to specify each track. We don't have to place each item manually. Grids are flexible enough to adapt to their items. We'll look more on this later. Before we get into this, let me show you a little bit more about grid template rows. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target my first container, which has a class of C1, and we're going to create a grid template rows. We're going to specify 85 pixels for the first row and 160 pixels for the second row. I'm going to save, and when we refresh our page, you can see that in my first container, my first row is now taking up 85 pixels. The second row is taking up 160 pixels. These two rows have been explicitly defined. The rest of the rows are just simply going to fill in and their height is going to be determined by the content that those items contain. If we target our container too, and we use our grid template columns, we can specify how we want our columns to appear. I'm going to use 20% for the first column, 50 pixels for the second column, and 120 pixels for the third column. If we save now and we refresh, you can see in this next grid that we have a column that is 20%, a column that is 50, and a column that is 120. Even though we have more than three items, the new items are going to follow that prescribed method of displaying within the container. A row track or a column track can be created for each value specified using the grid template rows and columns. The track size values can be any non-negative value. We can use pixels, percentages, m's, or rems, and with grid, we actually have a new unit of measurement. The new way of measuring items is using the FR. FR stands for fraction unit. The FR unit is an input that automatically calculates layout divisions while adjusting for gaps inside of the grid. One FR is one part of the whole. So if we have one fraction, that's gonna be 100% of the available space. Two fractions are 50% each. So one FR is half of the available space. And you can see that here I have three items. The first two are taking up one fraction unit, 25%, and the yellow one is taking up 50% of what's available, or 2FR. In this example, each portion is taking up a third, or one fractional unit. And here, you can see that the blue and green items are taking up two fractional units, while the yellow item just takes up one fractional unit. It may take a minute or two to wrap your head around the fractional units, but they really are life-changing. They are the most flexible and responsive units out there. Let's see what this looks like in practice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the developer tools. In the developer tools, if we come to the layout module, we can turn on grid overlays for our grids. This will give us a representation of what the grids are actually looking like. You can see when we look at the first container, we have two tracks that have defined sizes, 85 pixels for the first and 160 pixels for the second row. The rest of the rows are all sized based on the content that is contained within the items. On our second grid, we have defined the column sizes. So the first one is 20% or at this browser size, 144.39 pixels. If I resize my browser, you can see how the value on this first column is going to change. It is flexible because I'm using a percent based value. The second column is always fixed. It's going to stay at 50 pixels wide. And the third column is also fixed, staying at 120 pixels wide. When we use these units, you can see that I have a bunch of leftover space over here that is not being used. 
And that's because these values do not take up 100% of the whole and total width. We can resolve this using our FR units. If I come into our second container, and if we change this last unit to 1FR and save the page, you will notice that now the third column is going to take up whatever available space is there. It is using 1FR, which in this particular width is roughly 709 pixels. As I resize my page, you can see that that value is going to change. One fractional unit is just going to take up whatever space is available. It's going to go ahead and subtract out our 20% and our 50 pixels and then take up whatever additional space is there. You can think of an FR as a max and a minimum. The maximum is whatever you set in FRs, whatever value is left over in this case. The minimum value will automatically be set based on the content that exists inside the FR. If we change the columns to all be one FR, you will now see that we get three columns that are exactly equally spaced out. If I turn on the overlay once again, you can see that every column is identical in width. And as we resize the page, the width values are always going to stay identical. We don't need to calculate this. We don't need to configure anything. The fractional unit is always going to go ahead and figure that out. The fractional units are an excellent unit to use in web design because many times we aren't going to know what the exact width is going to be. We want that width to be flexible based on the size of the container. The fractional units will accommodate this no matter how many items we have inside of the container and no matter how many columns we add. You will find these to be extremely useful. Using the FR unit allows us to create flexible grid tracks. They will represent a fraction of the available space in the grid container. If we change our grid template rows to take up one FR and we save and refresh, you will see that the top container goes back to the initial display. And that's because one FR only needs to be as tall as it possibly can we have no height defined on the container. Now, if I go into the container and I define a height, you will now see that our initial grid template row, one fractional unit, is going to take up whatever possible space it can minus the remaining five tracks that need to take up whatever height they have to based on the content that exists inside of them. This first row is going to just take up all of the available space that's left within the container. I'll get rid of the height value for now. Let's change container one to use grid template columns. This time we're going to use 1FR, 3FR, and 1FR. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that the middle column is taking up three times as much space as the first and the last columns. This container is flexible and the sizes are going to grow and shrink based on the available space, but the middle column will always be three times as large as the other columns. You will find a wide range of use for the fractional unit, and we will be using this often as we continue to learn about grid.